All right, there is not an official clock, so my watch has to do. And so it's being seven o'clock on my watch. I'll call this meeting to order. Say good evening and welcome to the uh, March 18th uh, meeting of the Oconee Planning Commission. We are a recommending body uh, uh, to the Oconee uh, Board of Commissioners. Uh, decisions made tonight on rezoning requests and other issues will be forwarded to the Oconee Board of Commissioners for final action. Tonight's agenda and sign-up sheets were in the back of the room. I've got them here, but if you didn't get a chance to sign up, we'll, we'll deal with that. Um, the procedures, the Oconee Planning Department staff will present the uh, reports and their recommendations for each request. We'll have a public input, uh, starting with the petitioner or the petitioner's representative. And then uh, I'll ask anybody uh, that wants to speak in favor of the request to come up in the, that first portion. Then uh, I'll uh, open it up to anybody that might be opposed to the um, request. Both of those blocks we try to keep at about 20 minutes total. Uh, then once uh, those uh, two periods have elapsed, I'll ask the petitioner if he has time left or his representative to maybe address a couple of those uh, questions that might be raised. And then I'll close the public uh, comment period and bring it up here to the commissioners uh, for their questions and their uh, um, discussion. After they've got all their answers and uh, have discussed it, we'll ask for a motion and a second, and uh, we'll discuss the motion, and then we'll vote on that motion. Uh, they can modify and improve and place conditions on it. Um, at their, their request. So for the benefit of people that might be tuned in on the online and for the rest of us in the audience, when you come up to the podium, please uh, give your name and your address, address all your comments to the commissioners. Uh, and um, if there's multiple speakers on the same topic, rather than repeat, you can say ditto or something like that and go on with any new points you wanna uh, make sure that we're aware of. And then uh, we ask the audience to extend courtesy by not applauding and from their seats uh, for any of the speakers. And with that, I will ask my colleagues, you've had an opportunity to see the minutes from last month. Were there any corrections or additions that we need to make? And I'll make a motion to approve. Matt makes a motion to approve as right. written. Is that anything? Okay. And so I have a first and a second. Please raise your right hand if you uh, agree with their motion to approve. Okay. Thank you. And with that, I'll bring it to the Planning Commission for the first request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, your first item this evening is. Uh, rezone P24-0010. This is John and Dosh Donna Washington. This is the aerial photograph of the subject parcel. It is A03013A. It's currently zoned AG in the country estate's character area. And they're requesting a rezone of the 4.83 acre par property from AG to AR. Uh, this is a uh, a reported plat of the larger track showing the smaller track at the uh, top portion. And this is the smaller track again of the 4.83 acre track. This is the concept plan that was provided to you in your application packets uh, showing the two acre parcel and the 2.8 acre parcel. And staff recommends conditional approval uh, with our one standard condition. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have the applicant or applicant's representative? Just introduce yourself, I guess, if if you think that he's covered it well enough. So um, I, I said, got new hearing aids, but they're not working good. Okay. Speaking. I'm just saying you could introduce yourself if, if you want and, and make any comment that he didn't cover for you. No, we're just trying to separate the two acres with the house and the 2.83 acres over here that has the, the farm equipment on it. 
and we just want to separate that out, uh, liability and insurance purposes and stuff like that. Okay. That's all we want to do. Thank you. I didn't, don't have anybody signed up to speak in favor. Was there anybody that missed the sign up? All right. I'll close that portion. I don't have anybody that signed up to speak in opposition. All right. So commissioners, this one's on you now. I have one question. Does the current uh, for the property owner, I guess. Uh, go ahead, property owner. Yes, sir. No, I, I didn't get your name. I'm sorry. John Washington. John Washington. Yeah, Mr. Washington. Uh, the way it's currently laid out today, are, are there two entrances? So are, are we adding a uh, an entrance from uh, Hog Mountain Road? Are there currently two entrances? No, it's currently one, and it's owned ag, and the farm side will stay ag, and then where the residence is, it's got to be changed to a AR. Right. And that's why we got that two acres. My, my question is that shows two driveways. Does it currently have two driveways, or are we adding a driveway? Uh, no, no, no. It's current. It's no, nothing's changed. Okay. Yeah, it's that was, that was my only drive. question. No, nothing's changing right. at all from anything. Just drew a line between there to separate the diapers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Any any other questions? All right. I'm open to hearing motions. Thank you. Approved. Gavin, approved with conditions, I assume? Yes. yes. Okay. So Gavin has, first, do I have a second? And that's Lisa. Yeah, I had to, Ann's not here, so that'll make it easy. Okay. So Lisa is second. Um, that's a motion to approve with the staff's recommended conditions. All in favor, please raise your right hand. That's your nice. Your next case is rezone P24-0011, Kristen Shea and Thomas Sinico, owners and applicants. This is located off Newhouse Shoals Road. It's parcel B06034A and B06034AB. It's currently zoned AG in the country state's character area. And they're requesting to rezone the 23.11 acre property from AG to AR3. This is the existing recorded plat, the proposed recorded plat showing the five uh, parcels, slightly larger version. And staff recommends conditional approval uh, with our uh, one standard condition. And then number two, the proposed five lots shall be limited to a total of three driveways accessing New High Shoals Road with shared driveways being incorporated into the final design and general conformance with concept plan dated 2-16-24. That's the one in your packet. Uh, shared driveway easements shall be shown on the plat as required and a one foot non access easement shall be shown on lots fronting on New High Shoals Road, except where they are shared driveway easements or existing driveways. Number three, the location of the ingress egress easement for the proposed lot five shall follow the existing drive or the drive shall be realigned to the easement. There shall be a one foot no access easement for lots two and three on the side bordering lot four unless the private access drive standards are met uh, according to UDC section 101207. And number four, all dwelling units shall have facades that consist primarily of brick, stone, stucco, or lap siding consisting of painted wood lap or fiber cement board siding. No vinyl or metal siding shall be allowed. And each single family detached unit shall include a two, at least a two car garage. Thank you. All right. Um, so Kristen Shea, you've signed up to speak on behalf of the applicants. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't know if I was supposed to do go. that as well. No, they, they do. I'm Kristen Shea, this is Thomas Seneco, and we're at 2300 New High Shoals Road. And I don't know if you want me to- If there that. was anything that you wanna accentuate that he uh, mentioned about the plan or 
just give the... I, I agree with everything you said. The only thing I'm a little confused about is what the implications are of the one foot non-access easement. I'm not sure what that means. What is it that, that's being required with that condition? It's a fairly standard SOP, and it just prevents uh, some utilities to come across your property lines. Am I phrasing it correctly enough? There you go. So okay. we'll we'll leave that open for now. Okay. Go ahead. So, I mean, I can just sort of reiterate what's in the narrative statement, but our goal is just that we have a main house and a lot of acreage and we have two kids and we'd like to be there in college and we'd like to be able to leave one to each kid. We have elderly parents who potentially may need to come down here from Florida and don't really want them living in our house. <laughs> so we'd like to have the option to potentially have um, a location for them. So it's just really trying to separate out the main house and have a couple of other tracks for estate planning. Mm -hmm. um, there are two, there is one other house um, that has its own driveway. Our house has a driveway. We don't have any intention at the moment to build any more driveways, but if a house were to go there eventually, you would need one. All right. We'll leave it there and see if these guys have any more questions. In a few minutes. All right. Do I should sit? Yeah, you can okay. go ahead and sit. Thanks. Yeah. I didn't have anybody sign up else otherwise uh, in opposition or favor. I'll ask one more time. Don't see anybody. So I'll go ahead and close the public comment section. Um, could I have just a guy give us that one quick answer? Or just... Okay. And then we'll... You Thank you, Mr. Chair. Your other question. Have the concept plan up again, please. So you'll notice there are multiple tracks coming off of New High Shoals Road. The intent of the ordinance is to limit the to minimize those conflict points, and so the intent was to allow Track Four and Track Five to come off of one entrance, one driveway at this location, as the current driveway does. So two lots would be accessed from this location, and then there would be a shared access for two and three somewhere in this area, and then there would be the access point that's existing here. So the idea is to make sure that we minimize the number of conflict points, and the way to do that is through a shared driveway at this location for two and three, just like there's a shared driveway proposed for four and five. But she was also asking about the one foot. Right. So the one foot no access is just limiting access from two and three so that they cannot access this driveway uh, for access onto to New High Shoals Road. Um, that is a code requirement in that if three lots were to access that one entrance, then it would be a private access drive and it would have to meet those standards, which is 16 foot paved width plus um, ditch and swale on both sides. So, so the idea is to minimize the the cost and requirement for that by putting a no one foot no access easement along this property line. All right. Good. Okay. So, any other questions about this application? You guys have. Kind of um, typically in our country estates, character areas, our lots there are three acres and better. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Any other? I'll make a motion that we approve B24-0011 with staff conditions. With the staff conditions. So I have a first from Matt. I'll second that. Nathan, I'll second. So this is a motion with conditions to approve uh, as per the staff's recommendation. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Yeah. Thank you. 
All right, so one more. Hey, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, your next case is special use P24008, Fellowship Baptist Church. Uh, this is located on Ray's Church Road, it's parcel A05013D, uh, currently zoned AG in the country estate's character area. And the applicant is requesting a special use uh, to allow the expansion of the current church campus um, to a 500-person uh, uh, primary area of assembly. This would be creating a community uh, church as opposed to the neighborhood church that it is currently. This is the concept plan that's been submitted with the application packet. These are representative photos that were submitted with the application as well. And staff recommends conditional approval with our three standard conditions. Number four, all new or renovated buildings shall meet the requirements of UDC Section 306 standards for non-residential uses, including but not limited to the architectural requirement that building facades shall have an exterior material consisting of the following brick or brick face, natural or manufactured stone or artificial stone panels, stucco, ephus, glass, wood siding, or fiber cement lap siding with metal accent material not to exceed 20% of each building face. Thank you. All righty. Um, Justin, I got you signed up. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Justin Greer, Pittman and Greer Engineering. Uh, we're representing uh, Bethlehem Church tonight in the expansion. Um, the idea is just to add the next-gen building, do some upgrades on the existing building, uh, create some lawn areas for gathering spaces, and while we're at it, clean up the parking. There's a fair amount of gravel parking on site. I'd like to pave that, clean that up a little bit. Um, they've, there's been uh, expansions over the years. I think in 94, the original building was built, 06, the kind of the was now the main um, sanctuary building, and then the renovation in 17. Um, that's about all I have. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at the appropriate time. All righty. Um, once again, I don't have anybody signed up to speak in favor, but if anybody in the audience wants to, no. All right, so I don't have anybody signed up to, in opposition, but I'll ask if there's anybody that needs to. Having had no one approach me, I will close the public comment section and bring it up for discussion amongst the commissioners. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, let me clarify something, if I may, please. On uh, your condition number five, you mentioned the siding on it. Right, yes. Sir. And um, I wanted to be sure the the uh, metal accent material not to exceed 20%, you're only limiting the metal material to 20%. Yes, That's sir. the recommendation, correct? That's correct. Okay, I wanted to thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Got a question, for Justin? Yes, sir. Justin, the uh, limitation of twenty percent metal on the outside does that suit the house? Um, Guy and I have discussed it briefly, and I think right now on the rear building, that building is predominantly metal siding. And the way that I understand it, we way we discuss the addition of the patio covered patio area would not make us fall into that at this time it's just a renovation of that building and our focus is primarily on the new um, next gen building um, ideally we don't like that condition for long term because um, that building is it's all steel it's existing existing and it's been that way since 06 or 07 ish but right now i think we can live with that as is Any other questions? All right, I'll, I think I'll ask if there's a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to propose that we make another condition. As it's known, I am not a fan of the EFIS, and I would like to propose a condition number five, that EFIS will not exceed 20% of the each uh, building face. Okay, I'll take just a moment and ask uh, Guy, should I go ahead and put that as a condition five, make it easy, or? If if that's in, in the form of a motion with yes. condition number five, yes. that would be appropriate, yes. All right, so 
We have a motion from Jim. I will clarify to approve it with the four conditions plus my fifth proposal. So he's he's saying with just the uh, four conditions as per staff, but adding a fifth condition to specify that the EFAS cannot be more than twenty percent. This project, much like the metal, was limited to twenty percent. Yes, it is. Okay. Mr. Greer, what's the what's the uh, what's the applicant's representative? They talk about twenty percent. No, more than twenty percent. Is the whole building EFA? So we hadn't talked about it. <laughs> we haven't discussed it with the with the architect. Um, how much EFA he is proposing on the building? Um, do we know? I do not know the answer to that. To be honest with you, it's boxing me in a little bit, but. Um, Well, if we put it on this motion and we get a second here in a second, it could still be dealt with at the board. Yeah, I can clarify. And that's probably the better way to handle it. And I, I would like to follow up further with Guy on the metal, too, just so we're crystal clear before we get to be uh, the the commission, okay. the BOC, on that. So, yeah, I mean, yes, if you want to put it as a motion, I'll, I'll double check with the architect. We'll come up with our answers, and we'll just discuss it with the commission at that time. All right. Well, let's continue to run with Jim's motion. On this, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. So, Guy, for those of us that are that are not on four-letter acronyms, well, could you uh, let us know what EFIS, for example, drive it is actually yeah. referring to? One of the drives. Yeah. Well, um, got that, but. so it's a type of material that we see primarily in our commercial buildings, and we've seen a good bit of it over at Epps Bridge, and it's it's what yeah. appears to be a, a type of stucco, and maybe okay, so Jim could have made this. Cern's a type of stucco. Well, to, to be a little bit more clear about it, it's, uh, it's Portland cement mixed with styrofoam. So it's it's a cheap material, but it is a cheap, in my opinion, material. It's not very durable. And if you're selling a house with EFIS, you have a hard time with it. So it's really, I intend this as a favor to the church. You can use it as an accent, but it would not be long-term durable. And that's a reason for putting it in, not to create a hardship, but to ensure for the good of the county that um, you have a building that is going to be durable and last and and I hope it lasts until kingdom come literally <laughs> and that if that, that if that explains the question. answer okay thank you bud anybody else all right so going back to Jim's motion we have Jim making a motion Four conditions with the addition of EFAS not exceeding 20% uh on each of the building faces, and I need a second for that motion. Okay, Nick's gonna second that motion. And now, any last discussion on that? All right. So now I'll ask who wants to vote in favor of that motion with the five conditions in the one on the EFAS added. Raise your right hand, please. It's unanimous. All right, so that'll be added to that one. Mr. Greer, you know that Board of Commissioners is the last place you'll need to go. And with that, I'll ask my colleagues if there's a motion to adjourn. Lisa gets the motion to adjourn. I need a second. Right. And as always, vote with your feet. Yeah.